Uh, howdy folks, uh, Kathy Williams DeVries here from Brisbane, Australia and uh, today I'm bringing to you a discussion on the second of the Max Rager clarinet sonatas. Uh, I did do a short introduction uh, a few days ago, uh, just looking broadly at the three, but uh, I've actually recorded this one three times in three separate performances, uh, unlike the other two which I'll be recording uh, in a few weeks. But uh, I'm not sure which one's my favourite actually, I, I do love the second one. It's the one written on A clarinet, uh, the other two are on B flat. Um, so, and uh, the clarinet part is incredibly detailed in terms of uh, dynamic markings. Uh, you know, you have, uh, I read mean, almost, almost every note has some sort of marking. Uh, and you can go from double forte to uh, piano uh, very quickly uh, within the space of a beat or two. Uh, and also uh, the piano part is incredibly detailed, uh, very hard for the pianist. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to bring you through bar by bar, uh, plus I'm also going to reference the three of my recordings. Uh, two of the recordings were done on uh, by video camera, so uh, the sound might necessarily be as nice as the SoundCloud recording that I introduced to you uh, just a few minutes ago. So it starts with an allegro dolente. Uh, so there is a there is uh, there is a little sadness uh, dolente meaning sad. Uh, And also, uh, you'll notice between the recordings, the two that are on video uh, have a standard barrel, but by the time April last year, when I performed this the last time, rolled around, uh, I had these um, Bakun musical uh, Fat Boy Barrels, which I highly recommend. Uh, just go to bakunmusical.com, I think. Uh, Bakun is B-A-C-K-U-N. Uh, they have uh, these fat boys, they have mobars, uh, they have bells, uh, which I can't quite afford at the moment. But uh, I do highly recommend the Bakun barrels, uh, especially the fat boy. For me, I've, I've got this in Granadilla wood. And it gives you a wonderful dark tone. Uh, it, it makes the throat tones just a joy to play. Uh, brings them down a bit uh, and your top C and top D are not quite so sharp. Uh, there's an evenness all over the range and there's this really dark sound which I absolutely adore. So let's uh, begin with the piece. Be aware that the piano part actually starts the quaver before you do so what you really need to do is to give a firm downbeat so that they can get that quaver beat before you come in. Um, and it also helps, the phrases being very long, is to really map out your breathing. Uh, so the first thing I did was work out where to breathe. So while you're still in the formative stages of playing the piece, work out where you're going to breathe. Because uh, otherwise you're, you're stuck and there's nowhere else to breathe. But let me uh, play you, this is the SoundCloud recording. Here we go. So that goes out 
goes to about the middle of the second line. Let me play you the first recording I made of it at Albert Street Church. And you'll notice that it's uh, the sound's probably not quite as good. It's a different acoustic. recorded live because there's obviously truck drivers and beeping motors going past. This was done at my master's recital on the 9th of November 2010. So this was a couple of years ago. pieces. Uh, I mean you can say oh where the hell's your phrasing but uh, the camera doesn't pick up quite the detail and this one was filmed quite a deal away. Um, but, uh, let me play it now for you and uh, whether it picks up all that detail I'm not sure. So we're starting Allegro de Lente. Um, we're in 6-4 which is the same as the third sonata. Are uh, the sorry are uh, the sorry uh, we're, we're in six four yeah as well as which is in the third sonata so we're piano espressivo uh, with just the tiny littlest uh, adjustments in, um, in dynamic. So what you want to be doing in these first couple of phrases is really aiming for the A's flats and the A so <laughs> go up to a forte at the end of the first line but you're back to piano in the, at the beginning of the second line of detail and the front and you've really got to look at going right through the phrase um, don't just breathe when the slurs stop I, I breathe um, I in the first instance I'll breathe after the B natural and uh, so soft fingers too because you don't want this and the breathing's really got to be separate from the line as well and you would 
breather. And then you're back out of uh, at MF. And I actually take a bit of time there. Um, and make the sound richer when you get into the clarion and chalamo registers. You've got a huge phrase coming here. And again, I didn't quite reach the forte there, but have the sentiment there. But let me just play you that little bit on all three recordings. So, well, let's stay with the uh, master's recording. Street recording. to an espressivo section uh, there is there is a forte effectuoso um, and you're crescendoing from an F to an F double F so you've got to pace yourself but also be aware that you're going down the register of the clarinet so that by the time you get to the next line you're playing in the Chalamet register so you need to give even more than you think you do but uh, this espressivo is a little more outgoing almost an echo here and now it's quite sudden here and I breathe there so I keep that keep the air going down it Sorry. And you've 
quickly got to switch B's because you've got to do the left hand C to the E flat and you go into the conducto forza. So. your double forte don't force it uh, try and make more room in the inside of your mouth and open up the sound rather than play really loud because if you pinch and play loud it's going to sound forced play you the three recordings. Uh, let's keep on the SoundCloud. Okay, so I'm in the in an instant made it long allowed it. first performance at Albert Street. So you're coming off the double forte um, into the piano espresso, espressivo there. Uh, very introspective. And then piano takes in a bit again before you're before you're introspective again. in here. You can even start it a little bit louder because you have come off a triple piano. Yeah, but 
yeah, there's nothing to indicate it, but... And you are forte, really open up the sound, and as you're going down the instrument... sudden subito and then it gives you a little bit of a break um, one thing about these radio sonatas is they're quite exhausting because you are playing most of the time um, a bit like the Mio concerto I did last year that uh, unlike most concertos you're uh, Okay, so let's listen to the uh, master's recital. strip recording
going forward as much. With I'm aware of the throat tones are flat. It's just brilliant, isn't it? That sudden subito. Okay, so you get a slight little break here, and um, the piano comes in. So you've got three and a half bars rest. Let's listen to the piano part. We're into the second page now. And you start off at a double F. Although you are decoshanning, but I wouldn't decosh you know much beyond MF to make the P a real subito. And again, don't force it, just open the sound. doing much. section is quite um, passionate and involved. from P those bits on YouTube.
for it from the master's recital. <laughs> there so we'll make this the end of part one certainly because I have been talking for over half an hour um, so join me for the next video um, coming right up as soon as I upload it uh, and we'll go from the uh, middle part of the first movement so uh, thanks for listening bye for now